Okay, Algebra 2, now we come to the subject of factoring polynomials from Chapter 6.4. And as I've mentioned in the class a couple of times, this is one of the most challenging topics of the course all year. Fortunately, we've built enough time in how quickly we've mastered the previous material that we've got some space, some room in our schedule to really devote to mastering 6.4. So we're going to have a couple of days to go over this. Furthermore, um, I'm uh, just going to talk in this video lesson about factoring. Chapter 6.4 also talks about solving polynomials. We'll get to that. Also, I'm not going to give you any actual homework questions. All I'm going to ask you to do in the course of this video is practice the ones that are in the video itself. I think that's enough for you to try to accomplish in one night of homework. So let's get started. Um, chapter 6.4, in terms of factoring, offers four different methods. I won't read all of these off here because I'm going to go through each of them one by one. First of all, pulling out the greatest common factors. This is the first step that I would recommend taking with any polynomial that you're asked to factor. So as an example here, here's a polynomial expression. And you do it in two steps, really. The first step being that you look only at the numbers, the coefficients, 8, 12, and 16. What they have in common is 4. That's the, the, uh, the GCF. You pull that out. Similarly, with the variables, and this is the second step, you look at the fact that all of them, all the terms have x. So then you look for what's the smallest exponent among those variables. Well, there's 3, there's 2, there's 1. So you can pull out x to the first. And what you do is pull both of those over to the left. So now I've got the 4 and the x off to the left. By factoring those out, what I'm left with is 2x squared minus 3x minus 4. And we can look at whether or not um, you can factor farther than, oops, didn't mean to move that. Whether or not you can factor farther than this, you would probably look at the cross them up and split the middle technique first. But for now, this is as far as I want you to take this question. So given that one as an example on the left, go ahead and factor the one on the right. Hit the pause button. When you come back, I'm going to show you the answer. OK, I'm going to assume that you did that. And what you should have factored out were the 2 and the x squared. Pulling those off to the left, what you're left with in parens is 8x cubed minus 125. We're going to learn on the next slide, in fact, that you can go farther than this. But for now, this is as far as I would have expected you to go with this question. But the second of the techniques for factoring polynomials is looking for whether or not you've got the sum or the difference of two cubes. So here's sum of two cubes, here's difference of two cubes. And whenever you have that situation, the result, the factors always follow a pattern. And for now, don't worry about what letters and what numbers go in. Just look at the, uh, the general shape of um, uh, the, uh, the template that you're going to have to write your numbers and letters into. You're going to have a binomial first. And then when you've got the sum of perfect cubes inside, you're going to have a trinomial. You'll have a term here, a term here, and a term here. They're separated by a first a minus sign, then a plus sign. When you've got the difference of two cubes, again, binomial and then trinomial, this time the binomial has a minus sign. And inside the trinomial, both are pluses. This will always be the case. So look for this. If you see the sum of perfect cubes, expect the only minus sign that you're allowed to use to appear right here in the middle between the first and second term of the trinomial. When you see the difference of perfect cubes, one minus the other, the only minus sign that you're going to be allowed to use will be inside the binomial. Let's look at an example, and maybe this will make some Oh, no, let's fill this in and see how, what happens then. For a cubed plus b cubed, um, inside the binomial, you're going to have the cube root of a and the cube root of b. So this goes back to me saying before in class, it's going to be very important that you know some cube roots. This is starting to come up now. Then this first term of the trinomial is going to be that number squared. And the last term of the trinomial is going to be, I shouldn't have said that number, that term squared. And in the middle, you're going to have the first term of the binomial times the second term of the binomial. An example is going to make more sense in a minute. Here we go, x cubed plus 27. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a binomial. 
or actually the first thing I'm going to do is going to be set up my template. It's the sum of perfect cubes. So this template follows what you had seen before up here. Remember, in here I'm going to have the cube root of x right here, and right here I'm going to have the cube root of 27. Well, we know the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 27 is 3. Here, I'm going to have that term squared, x squared. Here, I'm going to have that term, 3 squared, in other words, 9. And in the middle, I'm going to have that times that, in other words, 3x. That's it. You're done. That's all that we're looking for you to do in terms of factoring um, the sum of perfect cubes. Now, you try. I'll tell you right now, this is the difference of perfect cubes. Hit the pause button. When you come back, I'm going to show you the answer to this. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've done that. I'm going to hope that you've realized that this answer should follow this pattern. You should have started by setting up this template for yourself and then filled it in. And when you did fill it in, you should have gotten that. 4 is the cube root of 64. Again, you've got to know some of these cube roots. Just like the cube root of 125 is 5, and the cube root of x cubed is x. And then this number here, 16, appears because it's 4 squared. This number, 25x squared, appears because it's 5 squared times x squared. So therefore, 25x squared. And this term in the middle here, 20x, comes from multiplying the 5x times the 4. And you get 20x. One of the most common mistakes I see is people insisting on making it negative 5x times 4 and turning this into negative 20x. Remember the first thing that I said. Set up the template first. You're only allowed one minus sign when you've got the difference of cubes, just like you're only allowed one minus sign in your factored result when you've got the sum of perfect cubes, and it always appears in the same place for every type of question. So m my only minus sign is right here. I'm not going to have any minus signs in the trinomial. Let me show you one more example. 2x cubed minus 54. I'll work this one through for you. This is not the difference of perfect cubes, but sometimes you have to put together a couple of different skills. I talked before about factoring out GCFs. Well, 2 and 54 have 2 in common. If you pull that out, you're left with x cubed minus 27. Now, x cubed minus 27 looks a lot like one that I've already worked out, x cubed plus 27. And you shouldn't be surprised to see that the result over here looks a lot like what I gave you before. Up here, the only difference is you've got 2 factored out and also the minus sign, x minus 3. The minus sign appears here, where up here it appeared there. But otherwise, notice how different, uh, I mean, how similar this is to that in terms of an answer. Let's move on. Grouping four terms. If you're given a polynomial with four terms, like that one, and this grouping technique is one that's expressly for cases where you have four terms, and make sure that they're written in standard form, largest degree, descending down to smallest. Once you've got that situation, split them in half, left side and right side. And almost like that cross them up and split the middle technique we learned back in December, you're going to worry about the left side separately from the right. Well, what can I factor out of x cubed and negative 2x squared? I can factor out the x squared, and I'm left with this. On the right, what can I factor out of these two? Um, terms, negative 9, and I'm left with minus 9 times x minus 2. The goal, just like back in December, is to end up with two, binomial, two binomials, this one and this one, that match. Now I've got x squared minus 9 times x minus 2, and you might think you're done. Um, but you should remember back in December, I talked about the difference of perfect squares. Remember I said don't throw your notes out from the first semester. This is not finished because you can go farther with x squared minus 9. It becomes x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 2. And that is your finished answer. Based on that, hit the pause button. When you come back, I'm going to show you the answer to this one in red. OK, I'm going to assume that you've worked that one through. You should have split it in half, factored the left side separate from the right side, and the result in this case, 10x squared plus 1 cannot be factored any farther. 
So that's as far as you can go with that one. And of course, x plus 2 can't be factored any farther. So this answer in yellow is the final factored result for the, the polynomial you were given in red. All right, last scenario. If none of the other techniques work, see if you can treat the polynomial that you're given like a quadratic. There, in that case, you can use those rules for factoring quadratics that we mastered back in December. One of the key points I'm going to keep coming back to is keep factoring till you can't factor any further. Example on the left. This is the polynomial I'm given. Well, I can see some GCFs here. 4 and 20 and 24 have something in common, as do the variables. So I pull that out to the side, 4x squared. What I'm left with here now inside the parens is not a quadratic because the degree is 4 but it looks a lot like a quadratic. I don't know how to factor this any farther unless I realize, well, wait a minute. If it had been, if what had been in these parens had been x squared instead of x to the fourth, minus 5x instead of minus 5x squared plus 6, this I know how to factor. And there are those factors. x minus 3 times x minus 2 is what I was given here as a quadratic. Okay, so treating this like a quadratic, my result is going to keep that 4x squared, but turn x minus 3 into x squared minus 3. Turn x minus 2 into x squared minus 2, and now you are done. And that's the answer, as I've highlighted in yellow. Now let's look at another example on the right here. There are no <coughs> um, commonalities. There's no greatest common factor that I can pull out of these two terms. 81 and 16 have nothing in common. And the term 16 has no x in it. I can't pull um, a variable out. But I'm not done in my attempt to factor because it looks a lot like 81x squared minus 16. If it had been this, this is the difference of perfect squares. And I have a rule for that. That becomes 9x minus 4 times 9x plus 4. That's something I learned to do back in December. All right, based on that, square both those x's just like we did in this example on the left. So now I've got 9x squared plus 4. That I can't factor any farther. But 9x squared minus 4 I can go farther with because this is still the difference of perfect squares. So there's my final answer. I've got the 9x squared plus 4 that I couldn't change. But on the right, I now have 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. That is the finished factored result of this polynomial. That was the last. Uh, of the types or techniques. And here's the last example. Hit the pause button. When you come back, I will show you the factored result for that polynomial. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that. There's the result down here, x squared plus 2 times x squared plus 1. And the way you got this was recognizing that this polynomial, fourth degree polynomial looks a lot like this quadratic. And if you treat it like that quadratic, you should know how to factor that one. Here's that factored result. Now all I have to do is recognize what I have changed here. I had x squared. Um, I'm, I treated it like x squared, but it was really x to the fourth. So I've got to double the exponent on this result here. And it becomes x squared both those cases, but otherwise it's the same as this factored result in red. All right, well, that's it. I know this is a lot to try to drink in and, and master. Like I said, we've got a couple of days to work on this. Um, I'm expecting that people are going to come with lots of questions. I would suggest if you have the time that you start reading chapter 6.4 now, that might inspire more questions, but I'll look forward to going over all of this material with you the next time we're in class together.